Now we're on LS10, and LS10 is, looks a little interesting on the drafting side because it's got all these angles that we're not used to seeing here, and that's because that's the way it's been assembled here on the actual quilt. And But if you just take this picture and look at the basic construction that we're going to change the way we do this because of the fact that we're doing EPP, but uh, we're going to go to the booklet. So it is. it looks a lot different, but it comes out with the same picture. And so here's the booklet. And so we're, instead of having all these sideways angles, we're going to have these lines based on these arrow pieces here. So there's these little pieces on the top of the arrows. So our assembly is going to be, this is going to be a three-piece tip, single, added to it, a three-piece band. These, these are going to be individual assemblies. So you got these three each, and then you're going to assemble this into this band. And then we're going to put these two pieces together and then add these for this band. So it looks more complicated than it is. It's just there's some little tiny pieces on this block that we're going to have to deal with. So here's my pieces. This is my tip over here because I didn't have enough box left to lay it out on. So I've got, I've got a very stripey fabric as my directional fabric here. And I'm not sure that I lined it up when we did this. So this is going to be interesting. I may have to go get more fabric because I'm looking at this and if it's not lined up exactly right, it's going to bug me. So, because it's so close, I think it's going to be like slightly off a little bit, which is going to be interesting, but we'll see. So anyway, we are going to start with, I'm going to start with this band because it's bigger and it'll get it out of my way. And then I can do the tip and then I'll be able to do all these little bits in the middle. And my basting, I'm going to, I'm going to experiment with my basting to see where my tags need to end up. So I'll go over basting as I put this together. So for these, I am going to baste these first. No, I'm not. I'm going to, yeah, I am. Okay, I'm going to baste these first because it's, it gives you a sharper angle for this obtuse angle here. And for this, I'm going to baste this first so my, angle, my tags go away. So I'm going to have tags pointing out of each one of these on the ends. And then these, I'm going to have tags pointing out as well. So hopefully I can put this in this corner together with, with little trouble. So I've got these two pieces basted. What I did is the short sides first and then this top part and then the long side. However, when I went to match them up, they were very slightly off. And so I tend to make a little bit of a bigger seam allowance and I had to shift the piece just a hair this way so that it could match up once I assemble it and it's not perfect but it's a lot closer than it was because it was like this before and it was going to bother me. <laughs> so anyway, um, I, so I have a very faint seam allowance under there but it's still, a, it's still I th think it's a little bit more than an eighth of an inch so it'll be all right long as I stitch it carefully. So I've got this and I'm going to stitch this together now and then I can move on. So I've got my two pieces sewn together and they look the same except one of them's got a shorter end so if you lose track of which one is goes on the bottom because you covered up your writing it's going to be the ones that a shorter end is going to go towards the point because it gets smaller as you go down. So this is the front of it and because I use that flat bat stitch that's in my uh, videos, it minimizes the showing of the thread. You can still see some of it, but it'll relax into there once I get the papers out. So that way it doesn't matter that I didn't use a dark thread on that seam. So I got the fabric all matched up the way I like it. Now we're going to do the points and I'm going to base this side first and then the other. And I'm going to do the mirror image here and then we'll be attaching them to the the open section. So I basted both of my end pieces. This is what they should look like. And now I will attach them to their uh, relative sections. Okay, so I've got these all stitched down on both sides. And this is what you should have. 
and I am going to set this aside somewhere and I'm going to work on my tip now. So these I am going to baste these sides so that I, first so I can get accurate um, points on these. So I'm going to do these sides first, then the little sides, and then I'll just do the longer sides last. This one, I'm going to do these long sides first and then the short side last so I can get my tags to go away from the seam that they're going to be in when they go on this one. So I've got my pieces basted. This little tip at the end is the trick because it's real easy to get this bunched and I didn't quite get it exactly but I did this one and then I did this and then I did this side and then this and this is it this is flipped over right now so it was this and this and this on number three and then on this side the angles a little different it's got a bigger distance to go and so there's like a, a clump of stuff the clump of stuff I get fill I fix when I stitch it to where it's supposed to go because that way I can accurately feather it in I guess would be the way to say it and this one I've done one two and then three and so I use that middle part of that stripe on this one to see how that turned out so I'm going to go ahead and stitch this to here first we're going to do two to one and then we're going to do this unit all on to three. Okay, so I placed number two onto number one, and number one seems to be shorter than number two because of the way that the tip falls. Well, that's because of my basting has messed up a little bit. So what I'm going to do, if you can see, there's this bump here. Oh, I'm having a heck of a time. There's a bump right here on the white and that's because of the way it was folded it's it's coming out and it should be smooth all the way to the end of the brown tip so what I'm going to end up doing you can see that a little better here is I'll stitch it all the way down and then I will force this into a line by my needle and so I'll take my stiletto and cram it in there as I go so then it will end up being attached to here where this angle starts so that it's then smooth so that when I put on number three, it'll just be one big straight line. So I've stitched these pieces together. I did get it a little better than it was, but I'm going to smooth this out when I go to sew on number three. So I'm going to lay this here and then attach number three. So I've attached number three to one and two this is not looking too great here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's there. That's better. Um, it's not quite smooth. But what it'll happen is when I go to attach this to the large solid triangle that will go here, this will be at the end of the big section. Then I will just like I did here, I'll just smooth it out and keep going. So I'm going to leave that alone because that's the tip. The next thing I'm going to do, this is there, and I'm going to take this and baste it. I will baste my short sides first and then my long side so my tags will be facing outward and then I will attach it to my other tip unit. So I've attached my number four piece to the other rest of my tip. So I've got this on the front. I'm going to put this over here with my other band. And the next part is I'm going to put five, six, and seven together. And I got to figure out my basting first. Okay, so I've basted my five, six, and seven pieces. What I did is I started up at the top here and then did the bottom, and then I did this side and that side. This puts these tags into this bottom section, which is going to be number four, so there's nothing to interfere with it there. And then the same here, just opposite. This one I did these two first, and then this one last because up here I've got all these seams. So I'm just going to take this out of play completely and make it be a smooth line so that I can then have some options to deal with the tags in this next section up there. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch these together and make them into one unit. So I've attached my five, six, and seven into one unit. And there's a thread on there, but that's how it's supposed to look. And now I'm going to attach 
the rest of my tip assembly to this. So I've got this unit attached to the remainder of my tip. So that's a, all together now. I'll put this over here. Now we're gonna work on this whole big section, the eight through 20 section. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take one arrow and the two pieces at the front. And I'm gonna base these first, then this, then these, okay? And then for these, I'm going to Based this and then this and this and this. This is going to be last, okay? So that the tags are going to point up. But I'm going to do this first because it's the smallest one. And then this angle. So I can get this angle on a primary fold. If you have a secondary fold here, it tends to not be so accurate. So I'll get that there and then this and then that. On each one of them, of course, mirror images. I'm going to do, get all of these basted so that I can make sure that they're going to lay right when they're in their setting. So I basted my arrow pieces. I did this first and then this. Then I went over here to do that short side and then the long sides. And then um, so my arrow pieces look like that. And these little tiny ones, I basted these already. And I did the short side, and then this angle, and then this, and then that. You want to make sure that you don't stick down, or don't sew down the tag. So make sure you're picking up the folded over stuff, so that when you need to go remove the papers, that that fold is not stitched down. And it's nice and little. So that's it's a little bit fidgety. Over here I've got this one. I started sewing, but if you noticed, I ran into a little bit of an issue. It's real, uh, what I tend to do is I tend to push really hard and sometimes I don't get this basted right. And the other thing is, is that I've got, I've lined this up, but it's so little that if it's off at all, it's way off. So I've got this gap here and I've stitched down this and I've stitched down this and I lined it up to the side of each of these. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to close this in because if I push this together and sew it together it'll close up. Once the papers are removed it'll settle right down in there. So stitch it, make sure that it's all closed up so that when you take the papers out it just calms right down and settles into that. So it's not as bad as it looks because I can push it together but I just wanted to show that before I finished stitching those together. So I'm going to stitch that closed and then I'll be able to come and do this one. So I got two of these units put together. It's not the greatest, but once the papers come out, it'll settle in. I've got this sort of straight on the bottom and the gap is closed. Same thing here, not the greatest, but you know, it'll do. So that's 15. And that's 11, so I'm going to put 19 with its little tiny things on next. I got all three of these completed and assembled. So the next thing to do is to baste these, and these go around each one of these. So I'm going to baste these and attach them one at a time. I'm going to do these two first and then put these on and then I'll do the triangles last. So I've basted and sewn this bar in between these two arrows and then I've got this one with the other bar on it. So now I'm going to attach it so there's all three together and then I can get to the triangles. So I've attached all three of these together and I've basted this triangle that I'm going to attach. I have, I've Got to base that one yet, but when I basted this, I did this outside part first, and then this one, and then this one, so that my tag ends up being on the outside section of the triangle. So I'm going to do that for these, and then connect both of them. So I've attached the side triangles, so this is all this band assembled. So now I'm going to take all my other pieces I set aside and make it one piece. 
So I put all three sections of my triangle together, and now my LS10 triangle is complete.